I'm Dr. James Spees, a professor and chair of the Department of Radiology at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. I'm an interventional radiologist, which is a subspecialty of radiology uh, that involves patient treatment. So interventional radiology is the marriage of imaging technologies that allow us to guide our procedures with minimally invasive techniques, devices. So we're able to treat a very wide range of clinical conditions with minimally invasive techniques. It, the beauty of this is that the patients have more rapid recovery, they have less pain, uh, and generally these are safer than the corresponding surgical procedure. My specialty is treating women with uterine fibroids. This is called uterine fibroid embolization. In this procedure, we're able to advance very thin, tiny tubes into the arteries that supply the fibroids, block them, and it causes the fibroids to shrivel up and the symptoms to go away. This procedure is easier to undergo than a hysterectomy, has similar outcomes, and a patient is able to recover in a matter of days. So for a woman who would like to avoid a hysterectomy but has very bothersome symptoms from fibroids, this really is a great choice. Why would a patient choose to come to Georgetown? First, we're very experienced. We have seven interventional radiologists here, all subspecialty trained and certified in this field. We have a very broad and deep experience across the entire range of treatments that uh, are in your interventional radiology. In addition, we have a great clinical team here. We have great nursing, we have nurse practitioners who are in our practice, we have a great office staff, and so we work very well together as a team to be able to provide the best patient experience. Which I think we've done more research here at Georgetown regarding uterine fibroid embolization than anywhere in the United States. We've treated over 3,300 patients now, and we've done numerous studies. I think we have 60 or 70 publications from different studies that we've done about various aspects of the procedure. Patient safety is our first priority. And we're very focused on, on that here at Georgetown. So in uterine fibroid embolization, we're able to do a number of specific uh, techniques that can increase the safety of the procedure. First, we treat both sides of the uterus at the same time, and that substantially reduces the number of x-rays that are required for the procedure. The dose is not very high to begin with, but less is always better. From our review of the literature and the results that we've had here, we're really a, a, an outstanding center for this type of treatment. Uterine fibroids are benign muscular tumors of the uterus. They're very common. They affect up to 50% of women. They're more common in African-American women, but all racial groups have them, and they're the most common reason that women need to have intervention on their uterus in the United States, uh, most commonly a hysterectomy. So this is a very big public health problem. No one knows with certainty. There's a lot of research that's been done, but we have pieces of the puzzle, but we don't have all the parts of the puzzle. We do know that they are driven by hormones, specifically estrogen and progesterone, but there are also a variety of growth factors that are involved, and it's a complex relationship. A patient may have several fibroids, but one fibroid's growth may be unrelated to the growth of another, and, and, and one may develop due to one cause and another develop due to another cause. So it's very complex to figure out. Despite the fact they're so common, we just don't have all the answers at this moment. I'm often asked if all patients with fibroids need to be treated, and the answer is no. Many women will develop small fibroids detected at a routine gynecologic examination or perhaps during an ultrasound examination, and they become concerned. Unless they're having specific symptoms related to the fibroids, they generally do not need to be treated, and both gynecologists and interventional radiologists would recommend just annual examinations by a gynecologist and watchful waiting. The most common symptom caused by fibroids is heavy menstrual bleeding. And about 80% of patients that we see for evaluation and treatment, that's their primary issue, both long periods and heavy periods. In addition, fibroids can cause pain. They can cause more painful menstrual cycles, but they can also cause pain throughout the month. They can interfere with uh, bladder activity, so patients will have urinary frequency or have to get up at night to urinate. 
and on occasion they can cause pain with sexual activity. So there's a variety of different symptoms that fibroids can cause and they really can affect a woman's quality of life. Patients are often offered a hysterectomy as their first and sometimes their only choice. And women come to me with the question, is that my only option? And for most women, the answer is no. There, there are many other options. Uterine fibroid embolization, the procedure we do, is applicable and, and appropriate in most women with symptomatic fibroids. Now, we don't treat women without symptoms, but if their symptoms develop, this is appropriate for most patients. There are a few patients that might not be good candidates, and that's the purpose of our consultation. We look at both imaging of the fibroids and also their specific clinical circumstances. And there are women that I would recommend other therapies. But beyond that, there are other surgical approaches. There are medications that can be given. So when a woman is offered hysterectomy, she needs to look further and ask questions. What are my other choices? Hysterectomy is a good option for patients for many patients, but many women do not want to have a hysterectomy. Uh, they don't because they don't want to take the time off to recover from surgery. They have child care responsibilities that don't allow them to be able to recover from surgery. There are personal reasons, sexual identity reasons, or other things that lead them to feel that they don't want to have a hysterectomy. There are strong cultural reasons that many patients don't want to be treated with surgery. So it's, it's, hysterectomy is effective. It is certainly curative. You, if you have a hysterectomy, you will not get new fibroids. But it shouldn't be the first choice for every woman. It may be the last choice if other things don't work, but I think that women need to explore a variety of different choices. Uterine fibroid embolization is a minimally invasive treatment that allows us to block the blood supply that goes to the fibroids. That results in the fibroid shriveling and turning to small scars. And the symptoms very commonly, in fact, in the large majority of cases, will, will go away. So it's a means of avoiding hysterectomy. And about 80 to 90% of women that have this treatment, they can avoid a hysterectomy and, and do quite well. This is a minimally invasive way to treat something that used to require a major operation. The vast majority of women are significantly improved. Their symptoms usually normalize within two or three menstrual cycles and they generally are delighted. Many women these days would like to avoid a hysterectomy and that's often the first thing they're offered. And what we're offering is an alternative and this procedure, uterine fibroid embolization, has now been well accepted uh, across the medical uh, field as a very effective therapy. It is minimally invasive. We're making incisions that are a quarter or an eighth of an inch wide in order to get access to do the procedures. The benefit of that is that the patient has very rapid recovery. It is generally safer than a, a comparable surgical procedure and oftentimes has similar outcomes. Uterine fiber normalization is highly effective. Among the minimally invasive treatments, it's the most effective. So uh, for, of women that are being treated today, a wide range of studies have shown that between 85 and 90 percent of women will have their symptoms relieved and be able to avoid surgical approaches. So this works in almost all women. There are a small percentage of women who don't get good results. This treatment does not keep them from getting any other options that might be available. Uterine fibroid embolization is done while the patient is sedated. The skin is numbed up or anesthetized over the top of the leg, and a small needle is advanced into the artery. From there, a very thin tube called a catheter is advanced in the artery across into the uterine artery. Once in place, we inject small beads, which are biocompatible plastic material, into the vessel. These are carried by the flow of the blood vessel to the fibroids, and those branches to the fibroids get blocked. Once they are blocked, the procedure is the catheter is moved to the opposite side and the opposite side is treated. Here at Georgetown, we actually do those two things simultaneously, so we're able to block both arteries at the same time. Once the procedure is done, over the subsequent several hours, the fibroids begin to shrivel up or die due to lack of blood supply, and then they begin to shrivel up. 
This procedure takes about an hour and a half and is done under sedation and most patients are you know, ready to go home the next morning. The beads stay there permanently, they plug the arteries and they get scarred into place. They don't travel anywhere else, they don't cause any problems and th this has been done in tens of thousands of women now with, with really no side effects that we're aware of. If a woman has symptomatic fibroids and is interested in having children, it's a more complicated discussion. There are pros and cons to embolization and other approaches. Right now, the first recommendation for a woman who has not had prior treatment for fibroids is usually surgical removal of the fibroids because there is at least some evidence to suggest that the chance of getting pregnant successfully is greater after surgery. Now, that's just the removal of the fibroids. Of course, the uterus is not removed itself. That procedure is a major operation for most patients and requires six weeks recovery, so we don't make that recommendation lightly. Women can become pregnant after uterine embolization, and that actually is not that uncommon. But the question is which procedure will allow a patient to more likely to be pregnant, and, and for the average patient, that may be surgery. On the other hand, there are patients who would like to become pregnant who are not good candidates for surgery. First, those who've had a prior surgical procedure on their fibroids or patients that have very large or uteruses due to fibroids or very large fibroids. Some patients due to other medical conditions are not good surgical candidates. So embolization can be performed in this group of patients and have great results, and many of those patients may go on to get pregnant. The problem with all of these treatments, unfortunately, is there's no guarantee about pregnancy with any of the treatments, so whether it's surgery or embolization. Uterine fibroid embolization is very safe, very rare to have complications. Serious complications occur in less than 2% of patients. The recovery is really quite quick. The procedure takes us an hour and a half, and there is uh, several hours of discomfort, usually moderate in severity. And so the patient is kept in the hospital in most places overnight until the next morning. We give pain medications and anti-inflammatory medications, and that generally manages that quite well. By the next morning, most patients feel really pretty normal, so we're able to send them home. They take oral anti-inflammatory medicines for three or four days. Usually, though, they will cramp for two or three days, and also they will get very tired, just sort of run down. They almost feel as if they have the flu. Now this happens after surgery as well, and that lasts much longer after surgery, but it happens after this procedure as well. That goes on for about a week. So the recovery usually takes about a week. Most patients can go back to work in a week. Most patients can go back to exercise within 10 days. And there's no scar. At the end, there's a tiny nick in the skin. We put a Band-Aid over it. So most patients, you can't even see where we entered with the catheter even a week later. We work very hard at this and we're very experienced. We have a very uh, detailed algorithm or, or plan for patients after treatment so that we're able to be sure that their pain, if they have any, is, is managed well. We've done quite a number of studies and the average patient treated here at Georgetown has pain on a scale of 10, zero to 10, of around a three or four. So it's moderate pain and it goes on for four to six hours and then typically tends to fade away. We do keep people in the hospital overnight in observation, just because occasionally patients will have pain at night. We want to be sure we can manage it well. But the techniques we use, uh, the medications we use at the time of the procedure, and also the follow-up really provides a, uh, an excellent experience for most patients. This is less painful than surgery, and certainly the pain that might be associated with it is much shorter. It, it really only lasts a matter of hours rather than days or weeks. There are some limitations to uterine fibroid embolization. The larger the fibroids and the larger the uterus as a result of the multiple fibroids that would be present, uh, the less shrinkage there may be. So we look at the overall size of the uterus and we look at the individual fibroid size to determine whether the patient is likely to get a good result. But we regularly treat patients up to six months pregnancy size uterus, really quite large uteruses and fibroids that are up to six or seven inches in diameter, which is very large. So again, most women can be treated with this treatment. It always is a matter of balancing 
what are the other choices? What are the things that might do better for that patient? And those are things that we discuss at the consultation. For a patient to be considered for this, we of course need to see them in consultation. We do a history and physical examination. Usually before that visit, we uh, arrange for them to get an MRI scan so that we're able to look at the fibroids in detail. That is better than an ultrasound, which is what many women have, have had previously. And the reason is it allows us to see the character of the fibroids, the exact location, the exact size, much better. And it gives us a better estimate of whether the patient's going to do well with the treatment. And there are some women who we would definitely not recommend embolization. Uh, patients who have very small fibers that aren't causing problems just clearly don't need to be treated. There are certain very large size fibroids, particularly if they're in the outer part of the uterus, that might better be treated with surgery. But really, when in unbalance, this is an option for most patients. And the choices in medicine are always relative benefit, relative risk. Most women would be well treated by this, but certainly we want to be able to, to direct the patient to the best therapies possible. We're one of the most experienced centers in the world, We've treated over 3,000 patients, one of the largest experiences anywhere in this country. We've done more research on this procedure, and we really understand this procedure better than nearly any other center. Even more than that, though, we have an excellent clinical team, and that really is, is all the difference between a difficult patient experience, one in which the patient doesn't uh, have a, a good outcome, and a patient who has an excellent outcome. So we rely on a team of people, nurses, technicians, nurse practitioners and physicians, and that gives us the best outcomes. I'm really proud to be a part of this program. This is a great hospital. It's a great program. It's really been a wonderful part of my life.